Good morning, and thanks for listening to Winds of Praise Broadcasting. This is KWPB LP Newport at 7.30 on Monday. It's the 6th day of January 2020, and we've been listening to Rita Springer sing about nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, boy. Beautiful, beautiful thought and uh, truth. Not just thought, but beautiful song and beautiful singing. And we appreciate you listening to the radio station, either to the broadcast at 98.7 or online at windsofpraise.com. And I'm pleased to be back with my friend, Colleen McNeil. Good morning, Colleen. Well, good morning. And it's... special guest, Pastor Rick Russell from the Celeste Sacred Ground Baptist Church. Good morning, Rick. Good morning, Scott. And we really appreciate you coming in. Uh, we've kind of taken a break for a couple of weeks. We've just been kind of dark. Uh, Colleen, you were down in... Klamath Falls? Yes, yes. I mean, between here and there, there's a lot of snow. It was absolutely beautiful. Wow, wow it looked like, I mean, it just almost looked like a, a a winter wonderland. I mean, all the snows, the, all the trees were just beautifully flocked in snow, and I was in a nice warm train coming over the pass. Oh, great. <laughs> and uh, here it's not snow. It's actually cold and really rainy, which is, we haven't had really rainy for a while, but what do you think about that, Pastor Rick? Uh, driving in this morning to the station was a little hairy. <laughs> <laughs> I put my, I have a, my, I inherited my mom's car and it's got fancy stuff on it. And one of them is an anti-skid button. So I had that one pressed this morning. <laughs> as, as you mentioned rain, Father, right now, we just think about our dear, precious brothers and sisters in Australia. Um, they need rain. And so, Father, we're just asking for your mercy, 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 yes. and that you would send rain to their land oh, yes. and that those fires would um, be put out. We thank you and praise you. Father, we thank you that for the first time ever, they have, I don't know if he's a prime minister, but that's what I think he is. Anyway, for the first time ever, he is a born again Christian. And so, Father, we're asking that you'd come up under his arms and that you give him wisdom and discernment and revelation and even reveal the things that are hidden. Thank you that you know, that when you gave Solomon wisdom, wow, you really gave him wisdom. So would you please give this man the wisdom he needs in such a time of tragedy and hardship for all of the people in his nation? In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And Colleen, that's why we're here. We're here to pray. And there are many things to pray about. I was just telling Pastor Rick, I've discovered course it's been around forever but cbn you you talk about that but the, on their web page gives you a christian perspective of the things to pray for and if you'd like us to pray for something specific then we're making that available to you and you could uh, text my phone everybody's got a texting thing this these days and it's 541-270-7855 if you'd like to text in something uh, let us know you're listening or just a prayer request or a praise that would be fine and uh, Pastor Rick, um, I again thank you for, for coming here. Uh, you've been around the block in the, the world of serving the Lord. Uh, you've got family that is serving the Lord. Uh, I've been blessed to be under your ministry in Salets, and um, I just appreciate you coming. And I say we don't have any agenda, but uh, is, is God laid anything on your heart this morning that you'd like to, to speak right off the top, top, top? Well, you may not have an agenda, but God does. He does. Yes, he does. <laughs> I've been sharing with Scott this morning. My son and his wife in the last uh, three months have moved to Oman, Jordan as missionaries. And with the unrest in, in uh, Iran right now and the unrest in, the, in, in that area of our, our world, uh, there's much to pray about. So, Father, I just want to lift all the innocents that are in those areas I, li I, I put them in my hand right now, Father, and I lift them to your heavens. And I pray your Shekinah glory to just shine upon them with protection, with peace, with strength, with purpose. Because, Father, you are the, the author and finisher of our faith. And, Lord, we know without question that things are uh, even scary there, but that you are in control and Father, for that control, we, we lift them to you and pray your protection upon them. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. 
And Father, we think about all of these precious people there and that you use just like Rick praying, you know, for his family that's there. And thank you that you use us, just ordinary people, to make a difference in our world. Almost like when you, like in the book of Joshua, and you sent the spies in. You know, there they are, uh, right there in the midst of everything. And Father, we just thank you that you will help them to see and hear and understand the things they need, as well as a hedge of protection and divine favor, Father. And that, Father, we think about those that they uh, have gone to share, Jesus, that you are real. Yeshua, you are real. Yeshua means salvation. And so, Father, we thank you that you would take the blinders off their eyes. We thank you that your Holy Spirit spirit is wooing them and drawing them. Thank you that you're sending workers across their path. Thank you that you're opening up doors that probably his family doesn't even realize that are doors, but thank you uh, for your uh, divine um, appointments. And thank you that many new souls will be entered into the kingdom of heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Colleen, you just touched in your prayer upon a couple of things we talked about yesterday in church, Pastor Rick. Yep. <laughs> the spies in the, the promised land, and then also uh, no one will come to, to Jesus, but the Father draws them. And it's not, not our job to do that. It's the Lord's job, and we're just, we're just doing what He wants us to do, hopefully. Mm -hmm. He says to obey me and, and uh, get to know me more than anything, and then love people, and, mm -hmm. and I'll draw people. And, and be faithful to, to speak the truth to them. And so that's what we do. Pastor Rob Dupra talked about uh, uh, Caleb as being one of the 12 spies that uh, was able to enter into the promised land. And he said he was 80 years old at the time. And when they went into the promised land, he said, I want that area over there. I want that mountain over there where all the giants live. <laughs> and uh, because he knew that it wasn't him that was going to conquer that land. Wow. He knew it for 40 years. And he waited for the opportunity to move there. And, and I think we need that today in the church. We need that kind of faith, uh, regardless of our age. Um, God can use us in mighty ways if we put our trust in him because he's the one doing the job. We're just tools in his hand. Well, and you know, the exciting thing about that was that God already said that he had given them the land. Yes. And so Caleb believed what he said. You know, it's like I think about... Um, you know, when God took me back to Washington, D.C., he said, you will be going to Washington, D.C. the 14th to the 20th of January. And that was for the inauguration of our now president, Donald Trump. And it's like all around us, there was terrible ice storms. Parts of 205 were closed down. I-84 closed down, you know, whatever. But I knew that if God said I was going, <laughs> I was going. And so sure enough, I mean, the day that I needed to leave to go catch my plane in Portland, the parts of the roads that had been closed opened up, and I got there just fine, just exactly like what God had said. And so it's like, yeah, we just need to believe him, sort of like how Reinhard Bonnke, when God told him that he saw, you know, Africa covered with the blood of Christ, Reinhardt believed him, and he went, and all we have to do is go take that very first step that he tells us to take and then he'll show us the next step and the next step and the next step so just whoever you are that's listening if God's prompted you to do something quickly obey and do what he said amen. and the very next step will appear right after your obedience amen amen you're listening to winds of praise and that's Colleen McNeil uh, our special guest this morning is pastor Rick Russell uh, my pastor in Salette's. Um, I know a lot about you, Rick, because I've heard stories and I've heard people talk about you. And a couple years ago, they published a big newspaper article in the local paper, and someone said that you know more about wrestling. Uh, no, you have forgotten more about wrestling than most people have ever learned. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I know that you, you, you never say no to God. If he asks you to do something, and that's the way you've been all your life, um, you're in your 70s, I don't mind saying that, you, and you've served the Lord since your teens. And one thing I like to do when someone comes in that's um, not the normal person, uh, a, a guest, you're, you're a guest, you are 
I guess that's definitely not normal. normal. I'm getting myself in trouble. <laughs> how how did God encounter you? How you know when when you started off? How did you come to know the Lord? What what is your testimony story? Well, I was raised in a family where God was talked about a lot, but never in a very good way. Oh. His, his name was used often in my home. Uh, never went to church, never knew anything about the church. In high school, I was a senior in high school, and I saw a young lady at school that kind of attracted me, and I asked her out for a date. It took me a long time to get up the nerve to do that, but when I finally got up the nerve to do it, she said, well, I'll go on a date with you if you come to church with me first. <laughs> So my first introduction to church was not for necessarily spiritual reasons. <laughs> uh, but that's okay. <laughs> I, I'd have gone to church if that's what she wanted me to do, so I did. And I remember walking into the church. I was 16 years old. I walked into the church, and growing up in a very dysfunctional home, and some of you may be able to relate to this, but I just took a deep breath. It's kind of like when things were falling apart at home, you take a deep breath to pull yourself together to be able to handle what's coming next. When I walked into church, I took that same deep breath, and what I felt in my spirit, didn't understand it, but what I felt in my spirit I was, is that I was home. That was on a Sunday. On Wednesday, there was a special revival service going on at Northwest Nazarene University. It was a college then in Nampa, Idaho. And this young lady asked me to go to the revival services with her. Well, I didn't know what a revival service was, but I was gonna be with her, so I went. <laughs> and. Um, at the end of the service, I couldn't tell you today anything that was done in the service of what was preached, what was saying, what was anything else. But at the very end of the service, they had us all stand up and they did what they called an altar call. And this music evangelist said, if you feel the Spirit of God speaking to your heart, come down here and let us pray with you. Well, it had been a lot of years since I had cried. And I'm standing there holding this girl's hand and trying to be impressive to her. And all of a sudden, tears are running down my face. So I turn and look away from her so she can't see the tears falling. And the evangelist says again, if you hear, feel the Spirit of God speaking to you, come down here and let us pray with you. Well, I thought to myself, is this what happens when the Spirit of God speaks to you? I wasn't emotional, I was just having tears. And so I went down to the altar because that's what people were doing. And I got down there, there was a person at the altar waiting for me and he had me read scriptures. Real hard to read scriptures when you're crying. And about the only thing I remember about my trip to the altar was he had grease under his fingernails <laughs> as he was pointing at scripture. Later on, I discovered he was a small engine mechanic and got to know him very well. But at that time, it didn't make much sense to me. When I got up from the altar, still didn't make much sense to me. And I remember going home that night. We were a farm family, so you had to get up at 4.30 to milk cows. And I'm sitting there on the edge of my bed, and I prayed my very first prayer. I said, God, I, I don't know what happened to me tonight. I don't know what was going on, but if you're real, I need to know that. And he said to me in an audible voice, he said, Rick, you needed a coach to teach you how to play football. I said, yes. Fundamentals, rules, techniques, get you in shape. I said, yes, I needed that. He said, you needed a coach to encourage you, you needed a coach to kick you in the hind end when you needed motivation. You needed a coach to pat you on the head and said, son, you did a good job. You needed a coach to teach you how to wrestle. You needed a coach to teach you how to run track. And I'm answering yes to all of his questions. He said this to me. He said, Rick, doesn't it make sense that you need a coach to teach you how to play the game of life? Mm -hmm. Teach you fundamentals and rules. Encourage you when you're down. Correct you when you're out of line. I said, yes, I do. So that night, sitting on the edge of my bed, I accepted Jesus Christ as my coach for the game of life. And my, deep, my, my theology has never gotten any deeper than that. Uh, studying in college, pastoring for 50, 60 years, um, my theology is still, Jesus is my coach for the game of life, and he does exactly what he said he would do. He encourages me, he speaks to me, he motivates me, he corrects me. Uh, he affirms me, and uh, uh, I've never looked back from that moment. It was life-changing for me, and uh, God took a kid from a very dysfunctional home. Both my parents were chronically ab uh, abusers of alcohol and drugs. Um, I have eight siblings. All of my siblings became Christians. Praise and the are, Lord. are serving the Lord, married Christian husbands and Christian wives, and are very Christian kids that are, many of them in full-time ministries, and uh, I remember standing on a cruise ship with my brothers and sisters uh, on my youngest sister's 50th birthday, and my sister just younger than me was celebrating her 40th wedding anniversary. I married her 
and her husband. So on the cruise ship, we we went through the vows again together. She brought them along with her for this cruise because she knew it was her anniversary was going to happen. I'm looking at it, my siblings. The tears just start running down my face because what God has done with this dysfunctional little family, what he's done over the last 50, 60 years of our lives, uh, only he could do, and I praise him for that. Which, Rick, I mean, as I hear you give that testimony, it's so powerful, and it's like, you know, he he <clears throat> was just like what Scott said. The Holy Spirit was drawing you. You went, and you were obedient to go down there to that altar. You took that first step, and then mm-hmm. I see how, um, you know, when he says he wants to set the captives free, I think, whoa, Mm -hmm. I mean, he not only set you free, but in the process, he set your whole entire, all of your siblings and and all their, you know, their partners. I mean, I just think how beautiful. I was a preacher for 50 years before my father ever heard me preach. He was totally closed to anything about the gospel. I tried many, many, many times to witness to him, but he went through three bouts of cancer and I had prayed for him, God, whatever you have to do to bring him to you, do it. And his third bout of cancer is when he bowed his head to Christ and asked Christ to come into his life. He was 72 years old. Wow. And uh, that next morning he came to church and heard me preach for the very first time. So uh, God can do amazing things if we put our trust in him. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. You're listening to Winds of Praise Broadcasting. I always like to remind you, maybe you've just tuned in, that our guest is Pastor Rick Russell. He pastors the Sacred Ground Baptist Church uh, in Siletz, which I am a part of, and Colleen McNeil. Uh, who, we're here to pray, and if you'd like to touch in with us, someone just called your phone. I could hear that, Colleen. <laughs> it's 541-270-7855, and eventually we'll be up and going, and we'll have a, a tool that will allow people to call in and participate. Um, praise God, I was able to work with our engineer, Jim Thornton on Friday, and we, we installed the EAS, that's the emergency alert system, in the next room there. So if there's emergencies that go on, uh, then we will alert you to listen to the big station, uh, K- KYTE and all that. Uh, but that's a requirement of, of the but FCC. But we're in compliance. We are in compliance. And uh, Pastor Rick, the church that we go to is not a very big church at all. But man, is it powerful, and people there just respond. And the little church has blessed winds of praise more than any other church, I would just have to say, uh, on a regular basis every month. The equipment that we've needed when our transmitter was down, broken, uh, you guys stepped up. We guys, I should say, stepped up. And then in our recent uh, needing of an emergency alert system, again, the church stepped up. and. So I'm very grateful for you being here and for you leading the church. Uh, The other thing is uh, unusual. As a senior pastor, you have four other guys preaching instead of yourself every every Sunday. Yeah, I feel guilty. (laughs) (laughs) But you're smiling. (laughs) Um, You're kind of responsible for me. Colleen knows how agonizing it has been for me to to step up and preach, but that's it. that's you're in charge of that, I guess. Well, I don't know whether I'm in charge of anything, but uh, uh, I think the scripture when when uh, John the Baptist said of himself about Jesus, uh, "I must de- decrease yeah. that he can increase," and I think um, it would be errant on my part to not have turned the pulpit over to a number of people, pastors in our congregation. I don't know why we gathered together so many pastors, but I think there's nine that I, my last count that we have in our little congregation. Um, so opening the pulpit so that they can share their gift, which is irrevocable, uh, I think is the right thing to do. But it, it, people could come to our church for a month or two and not know who the pastor was. So that's a good thing, I guess. <laughs> And in fact, Father, as we think about, um, you know, because you always tell us to uh, try you in the things that have to do with giving, especially like um, giving back to the Lord, and that you cannot, absolutely cannot outgive the Lord. And so as we think about uh, the Sacred Ground Baptist Church in Siletz, Oregon, we want to thank you, Father, that you continue to pour out a rich blessing on them. And Father, we think about the community all the way around them. And Father, um, 
I mean, I know that over the years, lots of people have tried to make negative comments to say, oh, you know, they're really just not interested in Jesus in that community or whatever. Father, we we recognize that is a lie. And we thank you and praise you that you can set the captives free, just like Rick told about in his own life, that he grew up in a dysfunctional uh, family with abuse and alcohol and drugs and whatever. And we thank you and praise you that you are able to set anybody free absolutely anybody and so father we just thank you for every person that is within a hearing range of this station plus all of lincoln county father we want to thank you and praise you that you want to pour out rivers of living water to each and every person and i think there are lots of people that are thirsty they're thirsty for you not alcohol or drugs so thank you for setting them free in jesus name amen amen Amen. um i just got a text and uh My dear wife, Kelly, the editor of The Post, is listening, and she wanted to mention that, Rick, you've also been a writer for The Post. uh, That's true. Yeah, and you (laughs) called it the Coach's Corner? What was that? Well, I was, at that time, coaching wrestling at Newport High School, and so I tried to write from a coach's perspective uh, Christian principles. Uh, As a coach, uh, winning games was never the central idea of coaching the idea of coaching was using whatever sport I was coaching to reach young people and to help them grow up to be strong men and women and uh, so to me writing coaches corner was a a pretty simple thing to do because it was my heart from the time I started coaching and you have a you have uh, um, two things you will tell your wrestlers which stick in my mind as well but what are the two things you tell your kids I say I only ask two things of any of you. I said there's and they're simple, but they're profound. Show up and give your best. Whatever we do in life, whether you're running a radio station or whether you're pastoring a church or working at a job or raising a family, if you show up every day to whatever that task is and you give your best, you're going to be a winner and uh uh Al Berkey, who pastored for years out in the Logston area, uh, used to say it's profoundly simply and simply profound. And profoundly simple, show up and give your best. Simply profound, it changes your life and makes you a useful tool in the kingdom of God. Amen. Well, you're listening to Winds of Praise. That's Pastor Rick Russell. If you have a question or a comment for Pastor Rick, you can send it in via my phone. It's 541 541- Two seven zero seven eight five five. This is Scott Albright. I'm here with Colleen McNeil for just a few more minutes. It's already been a half hour, uh, but but call us in. You know, text us in. As a matter of fact, as we think about praying for others, um, I got a text message this morning from a team of prayer warriors that are in Phoenix, Arizona, and um, the three gals uh, that um, I was able to connect with, and then they go at eight thirty uh, to. Uh, their prayer meeting um, at the uh, Sun City Nazarene Church. And there are about 27 or 30 um, people that come uh, for this prayer time. And when you go to their church, it's like as you walk in the door, the very presence of Jesus is there. And I know that it it's because they spend time at the feet of Jesus, looking up into his face, seeking his direction, and they're praying for their pastors and their music ministers and, and all of the people there at that church. So, Father, as we think about that prayer team in Phoenix, Arizona, we just would ask, Father, that you would pour out your richest blessing. Thank you that you will continue to call prayer warriors that uh, lift up you Jesus Mm -hmm. and we thank you for the story of Peter when he was in prison and they all gathered together at Rhoda's house for a prayer meeting and so thank you Jesus that you show us that when we gather together in prayer you're right there in our midst and I mean look what you did with Peter I mean you sent an angel to unlock those um those chains that were chained to him and so father we thank you and praise you that across our nation and across this world that you'll continue to raise up prayer warriors that know that you're real that you're alive and that you want to set the captives free in jesus name amen amen and i want to continue to pray for the leaders of our nations um, 
our United States and the governments beyond. Uh, pray for your perfect will to take place, Lord, and that we would indeed be a people who uh, respond to you and who bow our knee to you only and not to any other false god, not to any system, but to turn our eyes to you, Lord. And uh, we pray that anyone listening this morning would uh, understand and, and hear the truth that, God, you love them and that you designed them for a purpose and for this time and that they are valuable and that you want to give life and life abundantly. You've done it for all three of us here this morning, and we pray that you'd even <clears throat> extend that beyond even what we could ask or imagine this morning in Jesus' name. And Father, just as we think about, I think about Nineveh, um, messed up, messed up, messed up place. And yet, you know, Jonah didn't want to go there because he really didn't like them. And he wanted you to just like strike them with lightning. But he knew that if, if he actually went there, that you would be merciful and that you would save all of those people. Well, we look at our country. Oh, I mean, Father, we have messed up so badly. We have done so much that's wrong. We should have been just wiped off the face of the map. But Father, we're just asking for your mercy, 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 and that you would turn this nation back around and that just like George Washington dedicated this country to you in the first place, and we just want to declare and decree that we are one nation under God. Now, I don't know exactly how you do those things, but I know that in the story of Nineveh, you certainly did it. And so I know that you're able to do that again, and we just ask for your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Uh, Pastor Rick, would you, in the last few minutes, would you pray for the young people of our communities? I'd be happy to. Father, we, we lift up the kids in Lincoln County. Amen. We know that the challenges of growing up in today's world are, are many. And our children are the ones that are, get the brunt end of the deal in so many things. We know in working in this community and the school systems that there are a lot of homeless kids. There's a lot of kids whose families are disintegrating. And so, Father, first of all, I pray for the adults in our community, that we would be godly examples for these kids, that we would take them in, we would love on them, we would encourage them, we would validate their lives, we would show them that, Father, they have value in your kingdom. Uh, there's so many kids who don't feel valued. Our, our whole culture has created that myth. Kids are valuable, Father, and we lift that value up to you. And we ask that you would fill their hearts by the people you place around them. Fill their hearts by the circumstances and situations that you allow them to go through. Fill their hearts with hope. Colleen has used the, the term, set the captives free, but you've also, in that same terminology, when Jesus spoke those words in the synagogue, recovering of sight to the blind, healing for them that are bruised, recovery. And Father, we just pray all of those things over the kids of our community. Mm -hmm. That Father, you would touch them in special ways. Touch them, Father, n not in a magical way, but in a practical way through the people that will love on them, whether they're school teachers or pastors or Christians in the community. Total strangers would love on them and instill into their hearts a sense of worth, a sense of being, and the message of the Savior Jesus Christ being presented to them that they might accept it and receive it just like I did and just like the others in this room have done. Father, we love you and we thank you for the answer to prayer. Amen. Amen. Yahoo, that's what I want to say. You've been listening to Pastor Rick Russell. A special honor to have you come in this morning, Rick. Thank you for putting on your raincoat and uh, <laughs> uh, driving out. It's still in the dark here on the West Coast. And Colleen, thank you for coming back and being faithful to come in and, and pray. And thank you, Father because you are the one that we serve, Lord, and you direct all things. You cause nations to rise, rulers to rise, nations to fall, and rulers to fall. But Lord, as people, we, we stand in the gap. We repent for our sins and for our nation's sins, and we pray that you continue to have great favor over us and over uh, all the believers of the world, Lord. And, and thank you that you remind us that our job is simply to believe and to trust you in all things, because you are in charge. In Jesus' name.
Amen. 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 That's the other thing we heard yesterday. It's not my job to do it. He says, he says, what is my job? And Jesus says to believe. Believe. Believe God. That's Amen. your job. That's job number one. And that's why I think he also said, you know, like sometimes when somebody was kind of struggling with that belief, they'd say, well, help me with my unbelief. Yeah, and so I think, whoa, that is a really good prayer, Amen. you know, that Jesus even helps us with our unbelief. Well, I know that Pastor Rick is a great proponent of here I am, send me. And from the time you accepted God, uh, when you came and, and made your confession, you also told him, whatever you ask me to do, I'll do it. And I've, I've seen it time and time and time again. Uh, ridiculous things that you shouldn't even be doing, but God asked you to do it, and you said okay, and he was faithful. And that's been a great encouragement to me. I became a Christian on a Wednesday. <laughs> and uh, the next Sunday, the pastor of the church says, Rick, would you like to teach the high school Sunday school class? <laughs> so I had uh, four days experience in Christianity. Yeah. And I thought, well, I said, God, whatever you ask me to do, I'll do it. So that must have been God asking me. So I started teaching Sunday school class four days after I became a yeah, Christian. That's, that's one of my points. <laughs> We're I love it. To Winds of Praise, thank you. It's a KWPB LP Newport, Pastor Rick Russell, Colleen McNeil. This is Monday, the 6th of January. We'll be back on Friday. We've been through all the holidays, and thanks for listening. And, and Shannon is going to be here um, on Friday, and she's going to share her testimony um, about how she met Jesus and um, kind of her journey. So tune in on Friday because we have another guest to share how they um, encountered Jesus. Amen. Have a great Monday. Yeah, yesterday when I was on the train, I, I was sitting on one side of the train and, you know, kind of chatting with the lady that was next to me. And the Lord, I mean, it was just like, no, get up and go over and sit next.